everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're we'll reviewing a 2022 Chevy Silverado 3500 High Country, and we're gonna answer the question, should you get the current generation High Country, or should you wait for the new generation? First and foremost, though, a huge shout out and thank you to the Tim Daly Nissan here in Murray, Utah, for giving me some time with this High Country. I'm gonna include a link to their inventory in the description down below. This one is available for sale right now. If you're interested, they also sell the new Nissan product as well. And then on a side note, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into the video. Under the hood, we have a 6.6 liter turbo diesel V8 known as the Duramax paired to a 10 speed automatic transmission that is called the Allison, but apparently it's just Allison in name, but not necessarily the actual transmission itself. That's what everyone's been saying in the comment section below when I review these trucks. Uh, but anyways, super solid power outputs, 445 horsepower, 910 pound feet of torque. Now, Chevy recently redesigned the half ton and they did not increase the power outputs on any of the powertrains. And so I think it's a safe bet to assume that they're probably not going to do that with this truck either. Again, I might be wrong, but I think that's what's going to happen. So you're probably going to have the same powertrain. This particular one is the High Country package. So notice we have got the chrome trim around the venting there in the center. I love the blue paint on this particular truck. Sorry that the truck's dirty. It literally rained right before I started filming. That's my luck today. Um, you've got the Duramax badge and then notice Allison transmission badge right there that apparently is uh, fake news. Let me know if that's uh, true or not. Anyways, got the High Country badge there on the side. And then we have these cool LED daytime running lights with the headlights. Body colored bumper on the High Country package with the fog lights and then the chrome tow hooks and similar to again when they redid the half ton i don't think they're going to change the styling all that much with the heavy duty i think that basically it's going to look somewhat different from a front end perspective but it's not going to look massively different now covering the side here i've got two 75 millimeter tires wrapped around 20 inch wheels in the front and over in the rear as well and you guys can see the design on the wheels themselves again this is another thing i don't think it's going to change all that much um, when they redo the truck but you guys can see we've got some pretty nice aggressive all-terrain tires and then notice there with the off-road style shocks here with the truck as well um, now from a shock and suspension perspective again i don't think that this is going to fundamentally change with the truck you guys can see there with the front suspension um, i think that they're Pretty much going to leave that uh, the same kind of similar to what they did with the half tons. And also, we got the giant trillion mirrors on this, chrome door handles, and then you can see power side steps. And then of course, we got the bed step as well. Beefy leaf springs in the rear. They're going to stick with that uh, for the heavy duties. They still use leaf springs in the half tons, so yeah, I expect them to still use leaf springs in the heavy duty. So here's a key fob. We have our unlock function, our lock function, remote start, and then the drop down for the tailgate. We have a payload capacity of 3,750 pounds and a conventional tow rating of 20,000 pounds. But actually back to the key fob, this will probably change when they do the uh, redesign on the truck to the newer style key fob they have with the half tons. So that's something that'll change. Now from a bed perspective, you guys can see we've got all the plugins and stuff for fifth wheel towing, which is pretty cool. Power outlet. Again, I don't think that's gonna change too much. Aftermarket tonneau cover on this, pretty cool. That whole setup. Got the camera with the cargo light there. Um, so again, I see all this being pretty similar. Now, if this has the raise function too, look at that. Obviously, they'll carry that into the new one because, you know, it's a nice luxury feature to have. Now, as for the rest of the rear, I think this is going to stay the same stylistically, just like the half ton. If you look at a new style half ton, it looks just like the old style. So notice with the parking sensors, body colored bumper, bumper steps. And then you guys can see there with the big exhaust tip. And there you go. Now here's a door panel in the rear you guys can see here with the leather and then up above as well in the wood trim. This will fundamentally change when they do the redesign of the truck. They do that cool double stack design like they have in the half ton trucks. So that'll change. And then from a seat perspective, same thing. So these seats look great, um, but the seats in the new half tons, they've kind of slightly changed them with certain packages. And so I think that'll carry over into obviously the heavy duties as well. Heated seats for the back, you've got the USBs, all that kind of stuff. Um, but in terms of like the cab size, that's gonna be identical from like a legroom perspective or anything. So I'll pop in quickly. Unless we got a grab handle that helps out. So this is all gonna be the same from a room perspective. And I love this interior though on the high country, it's cool. Let's head to the front. Now here's the front door panel you guys can see again with the padding and then down below. Definitely looks great with the wood trim. Got your window controls front to our automatic and then this does have the cool mirror extender function ford and chevy uh, do this which is kind of 
Cool, interesting. Obviously, it helps out with uh, towing when you have a big trailer. Got the memory seats, the Bose sound system. Um, I assume this will get the new upgraded Bose sound system when they do the redesign. High Country logo. And then same thing with the front seats, right? They will kind of change them for the redesigned version. And this truck has like 20,000 miles on it. These seats have held up pretty well. Again, this is the 2022. Got your power adjustments, pedal layout, and also the parking brake. And then we've got a drive mode select for the drive line select. And the cool thing is this actually has a four wheel drive auto. A lot of heavy duty trucks don't have that. And then you got your cargo light, fog light, and then your regular light controls. Steering wheel is manually adjustable. Let's pop in. Now here is the steering wheel. You guys can see with the leather trim and then notice here with the kind of like brownish trim right there. And then you got some controls for the center stack. You've got your cruise control, heated steering wheel button, turn signal, windshield wiper stock, and then column shifter. Now in terms of the changes here, uh, they're gonna be very minimal. Um, some of the controls might look a little bit different. I still think they're gonna keep the column shifter with the manual shift function for that 10 speed automatic. Uh, so yeah, and radio controls in the back as well. So uh, don't expect this to look too different. Gauge cluster, on the other hand, is going to change a massive amount. So this has like the half digital, half analog, right? With the gauge cluster set up, and you've got the screen here in the center, which you can scroll through. A bunch of different menus, see different bits of info on the truck. Um, and then we can also see like the drive mode sex. We have a normal and our off-road mode from a drive mode perspective. And then there's also a tow haul mode. And notice how that gauge changes when you go in the tow haul mode, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you have the new full digital gauge cluster. So that'll look quite a bit more modern, quite a bit more attractive compared to this gauge cluster um, but yeah it's another change now here's the infotainment system first off if we pop it into reverse you guys can see backup camera trajectory lines that turn with the steering wheel and then we have the full 360 camera system in this high country which is really cool actually shows you all around the truck and resolution's fantastic on it look at that tonneau cover um now as for the rest of the infotainment system we've got uh Really good response time with the screen itself. It comes with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now this will be another big change because Chevy has their new big infotainment system in the half ton trucks. That'll carry over into these heavy duties. Um, I don't know if they'll do the same style in terms of like the dash and everything, but just expect basically the same screen that you have here. Bigger, looks a little bit different with some of the controls, but functionality is pretty much the same. And then also dash materials, which this looks really cool, uh, will change on top of that. Analog controls down below for the screen, your radio controls, dual zone climate, we have heated cold seats for the front, and then notice we've got our diesel exhaust brake. We have this for lane departure, parking sensors, tailgate drop down arrays, hazard lights, stability control, outlets, hill descent control, and then that's for the steps to pop them out. And then we have all of our outlets down here, trailer brake controls. Um, this whole section will change a little bit. The bottom half will probably stay the same, just like in the half tons. But this top section will kind of be revised and kind of pushed down with some of the controls uh, so that it, it just looks a little bit cleaner from a design perspective. So again, that's kind of another thing that I would just kind of uh, look for. Wireless phone charger here, and then notice here with the cup holders. Now this is another change, is this whole, so I think the center console will be the same here, but this setup will look a little bit different because they'll probably do the wireless phone charger on the center console, just like the half tons. Then it's with the USBs. So it won't look, it'll look like this on the top, but then it'll have like the little like thing that pops down. Um, so, yeah, just be a little bit different in terms of the functionality there. And then they'll probably do the funny top glove box just like in the half tons, you know, it kind of pops up all weird. Um, and then in terms of coloration, they'll probably do blue interior. That's another thing I should mention, uh, cause this is a high country and with the new high country and the half ton, you got like the blue interior. I'm, I'm willing to bet they're probably gonna do the same thing. And then popping up to the top, uh, no center for anything with this one, power sun window. Um, I don't think they're gonna do a panoramic. I think they'll still just let you do a regular center. And then camera mirror, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to get that just like in the half tons. Um, but yeah, there's the top. Now let's quickly talk about pricing. So the half tons did go up in price a little bit compared to the older body style. And so I expect the heavy duties to go up as well probably by you know at least a couple thousand dollars i would expect with each of the packages now in terms of my overall thoughts on the 3500 silverado and whether you should wait uh, to get the new one or you should get something like this right now here's the deal i again don't think that the capabilities of the truck are going to increase at all with the changes it's going to be the interior that's going to change so if you're just using this as a tow rig and you want a comfortable reliable truck this is going to give you that right out of the box already 
But if you need to have the digital gauge cluster and the bigger infotainment system and the interior changes, then yeah, it'll be worth the wait. Um, but again, you're not gonna get any extra capability. So if you think you're gonna be able to tow more or haul more on that kind of stuff, again, I don't foresee that happening. It seems like Chevy and GM have just kind of like stepped aside out of the like torque wars and the towing wars that Ford and Ram have been entangled in in the last little bit. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe. GM will come out with, you know, a revised version of the engine that'll put out a massive amount of horsepower and torque, but I just don't see that happening. I think that at this point, GM is focusing on reliability because, you know, they know that customers don't need to tow the crazy amounts that Ram and uh, Ford have with the trucks. And so I think that they're basically just gonna stick with uh, old reliable is the best way to put it. They're not gonna go crazy with the power outputs. And so yeah, I want you guys to let me know what you think. Um, if you think that they're gonna do more changes than that, if you think I'm completely wrong, I understand that. Let me know in the comment section below. But yeah. Now let's get something's up for our video on this high country. Again, a huge shout out thank you to the Tim Daly Nissan here in Murray, Utah for giving me some time with this high country. Check out the inventory in the description down below. I'll see all of you in the next video.